Sparkling water. Yes. Um, I'm drinking sparkling black raspberry. Yes. And, and mine is orange mango. Right. Zero so, calories. Zero calories. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you if you have not uh, if you were listening or watching the Facebook Live intro, this is our final podcast for the year. I said we are. Um, yes. And it's going to be a little family affair because I have my nephew. So I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a little um, noisy. Zachary. Say hi, Zachary. Say hello. He has a little. Now you don't want to say hello? Say hello. No. He's shaking his head. It is what it is. He's three. And he's going to run amok a little bit. So be patient with us. We're gonna try and get then this. I shall be Jim. Okay. <laughs> that. <laughs> Great. And so I know that we were asking people like, what should our last episode be for the for the new year? And we we got a couple of responses about the most influential people. Yeah. Of 2017. So what I decided to do was, Zachary, please give me a second. Okay. Give my tea a second. <laughs> uh, what I decided to do was, I, I basically Gosh. went to time. And, you know, they always come out with their annual 100 most influential yeah. list. And I basically, yeah. what, I, what I ended up doing was I looked at all of the people of color. Because, again, we're about building our own community, supporting our own women's empowerment, yes. So, you know, that kind of, that that ends up being, you know, across the spectrum of our chocolate and vanilla sisters. So, um, I, think, I think maybe we should count down maybe the top ten, maybe, for the uh, well, sake of time. So they didn't have like a top, I mean, they don't have it listed as number, but they had them di- listed in different categories. I mean, okay. it wasn't a lot of people. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to throw in some people from locally also. Yeah. I And I'll let Melanie handle that. Okay. Um, one of, so let's just, I guess we can just start because that's what this episode is going to be about. And knowing us. We're going to be down to the wire trying to end this show. And let's see if we actually have enough time at the end to promote and talk about other things be- beyond this. So, first up, they had a Pioneers category, Chance the Rapper. Oh, yeah. I like Chance the Rapper. Yeah. He's so cool yeah, He has so, a big following. Absolutely. I mean, you know, they, they talked about, you know, just... Again, there, uh, there's quite a there's a couple of millennials on this list. Chance the rapper is a millennial, and what I liked about Time is that it wasn't like the writers of Time that was doing the interviews. It was mm-hmm. other artists. I didn't oh, cool. focus on who the other artists is, but in Chance the Rapper's case, it was Common. Uh, Common re- reflected on the fact that many years ago, Chance the rapper actually spoke to him and said, I want to be a rapper when I grow up. And it, when once Chance the Rapper became successful, he then, you know, reminded Common that it was through whatever those relationships were that they connect that um, he was one of the people that inspired him. Mm-hmm. And so what I love is that, you know, not only did he stream his video, his album, 
uh, you know, online instead of selling them, mm -hmm. you know, traditionally, he was, you know, his, his music was, and this is what's quoted from, from time, he makes his music unapologetically inspiring and, and from a Christian perspective. Yes. His music transcends age, race, and gender. He also gives back to the, his Chicago community, and he does it all as an independent artist without the support of a label. So again, you know, uh, most influential 100 people on this list, Chance the Rapper, kudos to you. Yeah. Uh, other artists, uh, Alicia Keys. You know, her big thing was a no makeup movement. That's was right. That, was that this that was year? This, yeah, that was this year. Uh, it felt like it was... It was this year. Uh, yeah. It's it felt, like the very beginning of 2017. So, you know, that was one of her things, her expressing her de desire to go makeup free. And then she released a single in common with a bare, gorgeous art cover, uh, making public appearances with no makeup and just really, again, just not hiding from her truth, uh, mm -hmm. sharing her flaws and dreams. And, you know, we watched that journey unfold. I thought, you know, that was a really good choice. Yeah, or, and she's still very pretty. I mean, she's gorgeous. So, I mean... And I think a lot of celebrities follow suit. I mean, and I, I certainly, I appreciate it. So, again, Alicia Keys, uh, one of our minority women... Uh, doing the things, most, doing doing different, doing things. Another millennial, Donald Glover. You know that he was originally, I think he was uh, hired as a writer on Thirty Rock. Is oh it? yeah, yeah. So he was a writer, and he was still in college at New York University at the time. Uh, but he went to the producers of the show and said while he enjoyed doing being a writer on the show, he wanted to become an artist. And so, uh, you know, from... he He's also an, uh, a rapper, I believe. And then they, talk, then they mentioned that he gave us Atlanta, mm. the TV series that's basically him. It's funny, beautiful, stylish, melancholy, and confident. Uh, and you know, he's just been able to push the envelope and really in, in, encompass what millennials believe that if they want, whatever it is that they want to do, you just go out and do it. Uh, Donald Glover definitely covers that. Um, Listen, let me tell you something in 2017 and not well ending 2017 and going into 2018 with the new tax reform and everything. It's to the point where if you want to be above the means, mm -hmm. you need to pursue whatever your passions are, whatever what? those things are, and your own biz and pursue your own business to to make money. Yeah. To make to 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 make money moves basically because this new tax reform, and we're, we're not going to talk about it, but I'm just saying it, it, all of these steps and movements that we're talking about kind of lends us into what's to come into in 2018. For sure. Now, you know, again, I'm, we're only going to, I'm only going to highlight the, you know, our, the black people mm -hmm. on this, on this list. But of course, uh, Donald Trump was on the, that list. Uh, Ivanka uh, Trump I'm, was I'm, on that we're, list. We're, we're I'm just acknowledging, you know, they were on that list as well. But, um, anyway, on to other things. We yeah. want positive influence. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Leslie Jones was on, on that list and I don't think that they really pinpointed Leslie Jones is the committee comedian, black comedian, uh, that's on Saturday Night Live. Is she still a part of the cast? I don't know. Anyway, she was also um, on the, uh, I guess, the new, um, what is it? Ghostbusters. The Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, she did a lot in yeah, 2017. Exactly. So, you know, they basically talked about her presence and just her energy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really take any direct quotes from it because it all talked about, you know, who mm -hmm. she is and being authentic and genuine and in your face and, you know, just those real 
leave it on the table type comedians. I mean, I saw, I wasn't, I guess it was this year that she hosted something and she was just raw. It was, was it, it was, was it an award? It was an award, I think an award ceremony. I can't remember what it was. It was one that happened the early part of the year. Very early in the year. Uh, And I, you know, apologize for not getting that information. But as you know, you know, Mm -hmm. we're very impromptu. Yeah, we're pretty, pretty impromptu. So moving on, (laughs) Ava DuVernay. Did I pronounce her name? Uh, Who is that? She's Asara. She's the director that did Selma. Oh, okay. Yes. And Queen Sugar. Okay. Well, isn't there what? Well, so, you know, again, memorable year. Um, you know, she's one of our Soras. Yeah. I and that's the one with the dreads. Yes. I, I don't, I'm not very good with names. Yeah, sorry, exactly. Well, but I know what you're talking about. Exactly. And she did something recently. I think so. I can't remember what it was, but she makes it her mission to tell important stories. Like I said, from Selma and then there was a prison documentary 13. And, oh, actually, she just did the Jay-Z video. Oh, she was the, the one that directed. Yeah, the, she directed oh, that, the... Talk about influential. Yeah, exactly. Now, that I watched that I watched that video twice. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was really... They're making a statement. It, yeah, truly making a statement. I mean, um, and she you know, encouraged she's, me. And she's also empowering, you know, other storytellers. She's... I guess she's one of the main producers for for Queen Sugar, and she's been choosing only female directors to helm each episode. So that she's opening doors, and that that's amazing. Mm. Um, so kudos to our Sarah. I hope my girl is on this list. Who's Issa? She's she wasn't. She, she should be on this list. I did not see her. I could have. It, I'm hoping it's not an open time. Set. We're putting her on the list. <laughs> so John Legend was also on the list. He uses his platform to push for meaningful social change, and uh, and the depth of his commitment is you know to be admired. He's visited prisons to raise awareness about mass incarceration, the new slavery, and he spoke out about the importance of Black Lives Matter. Uh, at uh, Sankofa's uh, Many Rivers to Cross Festival. Um, and he's continuing to grow and develop as an artist. And I think he's expecting another child from his wife. Yeah. I love her. Love, mm-hmm. love them both. And so, I, and I, and I don't, it's not, a, it's not a theme, but it seems like a lot of the talents that are on this list are doing a multitude of things. They're not just excelling in their, you know, in their regular career. They're also, you know, again, creating different movements to help bring about social change. And so I'm I'm really, I'm really glad that I've probably never paid attention to previous years time influential, but this makes me want to pay attention more because why do you choose the people that you choose? Right. Um, you know, don't let it, for me, I don't want it to just be controversial. I don't want it to be, you know, someone that's just constantly st- seeking attention. I want to see, you know, good things. And speaking of which, good things, Barry Jenkins is on this list. Who is Barry Jenkins? He was the director of Moonlight, and he is a South Florida... Is he a South Florida native? Yes. Yes. And he went to Florida State, and this is one of our own. So, you know, they they said that it's rare. He's uh, is one of those rare artists who's willing to look into deeper places. This is a quote from Time. Um, Places of themselves and society in order to provide a lens through which we may discover the humanity at our core. And again, his first feature film was Medicine for Melancholy. And um, I don't know if he's done anything beyond there. And then, of course, Moonlight that he wrote and directed and and won an Academy Award for it. It was the best, best feature, best film, I believe. Um, he not only knows where he's coming from, but he has a gift. And he's able to show... 
that um, and and you're able to understand it. That I did eventually watch Moonlight, not when it was in theaters, but afterwards. And I, I have to also say it was a very, very um, deep and interesting. I won't say interesting, but it was it was a very um, emotional film. Different yeah. perspective, was, and, you know, yeah, different a, perspective that you know than what we're used to seeing on film, especially so, about Miami. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It showed you a different piece of Miami that you mm-hmm. don't typically see, and from a different perspective. Uh, Tom Perez, this is this is politics. He is the current uh, DNC chair. He's the child of Dominican immigrants. Uh, his dad earned his U.S. citizenship after enlisting in the army. Uh, he is, you know, he's absorbed early on the legacy of patriotism, uh, patriotism uh, striving. For, for social justice. He's a prosecutor, civil rights lawyer, uh, local elected officials. He was a former secretary of labor, dad, husband, and now the chairman of the DNC. So Tom Perez, I hope you're paying attention to what's happening and, and you know, kudos to what's already happened in Virginia, what's already happened in uh, Alabama, Let's bring <laughs> more Democrats in the fold in 2018. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also hoping that you pay attention to non-traditional races, especially, you know, some of the races that I'm involved with in Florida. Speaking of Democrats, here's one. I don't know if this was on, she was on time. Okay. Our auntie, Rep, um, Representative Maxine Waters. Oh! I think she's very influential. Was Absolutely. she on Absolutely. Um, you know what? I don't believe she was. And she's one of President Trump's most vocal critics. Um, she's hit him on Twitter. And um, she's determined to support and campaign for his impeachment. Mm-hmm. Um, she catches heat from Trump. Very harsh criticism from him. But it does not make her scared. <laughs> so Maxine Waters is not on times list, but she was definitely very influential in our community. And so we are acknowledging Auntie Maxine. Yes, we are. That's my auntie, baby. <laughs> um, RuPaul was also on this list. I got to hear this one. Well, you know, the RuPaul's Drag Race is now uh, premiering officially on VH1 after eight seasons of it being on Logo. And so now million more, millions of other people will start to, uh, or, and get to know RuPaul uh, the way that the person that was actually interviewing him knew. Oh, I think it was Naomi Campbell that's known him since the 90s and was, you know, just enamored with him. And, uh, you know, again, he's just, you know, he's RuPaul. But, I mean, I remember when he was out back then in his video work, cover girls. Da, da, yeah. Da. Well, anyway, yeah. so, you know, now he's introducing this whole drag industry into the mainstream. And I guess for that. I mean, I think he did that before 2017. No, right? I mean, no, it's, it's the, the his, his drag race show has been on for eight seasons. Yeah. But it's now on VH1, whereas, but I. I want to think that it was on VH1 or some other main station before this year. Anyway, so RuPaul, she was, he was on that list. Um, uh, and I'm going to end it. I know that I think there were others. I want to talk about Issa Rae. I can't, I cannot like not talk about Issa Rae. <laughs> Issa Rae, um, her real name is Joissa and she's an American actress and she is the director, producer that started um, her show on YouTube Mm -hmm. and it grew to something bigger and better and I actually, this year, well towards the middle to the end of the year is when I jumped on Mm -hmm. the show Insecure watching it. Love Um, the show. Many people were telling me about it and I just never did it. 
I mean, I never watched it. And so finally I caught up, been watched, binge watched for maybe two days and caught up. And I can't wait for the show to begin. And my, it's my understanding that she has two other shows yes. in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's a black girl that rocks. Oh, absolutely. She believes in um, spreading her, or well, how can I say it? She reached out to her friends and people, as she would say, across. Mm-hmm. She reached across instead of reaching up to achieve her um, success, yeah, which she, I think is awesome. Absolutely. She had a, a really uh, significant interview where she talks of just about that, and mm-hmm. I think that interview went viral. I know we shared it, mm-hmm. and we got a lot of response from that. And actually, even amongst our little community of people that we know, mm-hmm. we started to get um, people to want to participate and join our podcast. Yes. Uh, shout that. out to yeah. Chanel and oh, Candace. I'm scared we're going to miss somebody. Uh, well, I'm just going to say, the, you know, her and um, Butterfly were the two of the early folks that when we shared that particular video, like just immediately started chiming in. Again, yes. we were speaking to the choir. I know we're going to miss, miss a bunch of people. And so I just wanted to say, uh, that there's so many like-minded um, business women, men that are doing great things, especially in our our community uh, that don't that does not that don't get the recognition that they deserve. And so I'm just uh, so afraid if we start listening. No, no, we're, we're not going to miss gonna, somebody. Yeah, we're not going to list because we are going to miss people yeah. because there's plenty of people that are out there that are, that are doing like amazing things yes. and. You know what? While I while I while I say that, uh, I want to acknowledge that Miami Gardens and Top Golf. Have you have you gone? No, to, but it's on my things to do. I drove by and saw it and was like really taken aback. I was amazed. I mean, it looked it was I, the crowds that I saw again. It just officially launched, I guess, last week. Uh, like I'm really impressed, and I'm I'm pretty. I, I want to yeah. go. I'm going to go. I don't know when, but I'm gonna take a minute to to go to Top Golf and yeah, and that's a big fun. move right and there. That, that was a good move in Miami Gardens. That's good. Um, you know what I I won't say anything negative. I will just no. We're not gonna to get say, in trouble. Great. That is a, a, some good things. Wonderful. I mean, that you is, know. Some Amazing. good things going on. Um, so, you know, kudos to Miami Gardens. Yes. Yay! We're, we're definitely heading in the right direction. Um, if, Viola Davis was on this list. Oh, yes. She's so definitely. So we have to talk about her. And Meryl Streep was the one that, that did this little mm-hmm. interview. And so she was just saying, so she says, when you spend your life embodying other lives... If you are successful, the one that belongs to you can silently slip behind. But Vi- Viola Davis's hard-won midlife rise to the very top of her profession has not led her to forget the rough trip she took getting there. And that's why she embodies for all women, but especially for women of color, the high-wire rewards of hard work and a dream, risk, and faith. Uh, Viola has carved a place for herself on Mount Rushmore of the 21st century. New faces emerging from a neglected mountain. And when she tells her story of how she got from where she was to where she is, it is as if is on a pilgrimage, following her own footsteps and honoring that journey. Her gifts as an artist are unassailable, undeniable, deep, rich and true but her importance in the culture her ability to identify it her willingness to speak and and take on the responsibility is to be admired yeah i mean i love violet i love her i mean how to get away with murder is one of my shows that i am trying to binge watch zachary please Mm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> um, I mean, I I've loved her since the mo- the movie The Help. 
The Help. Um, there was a couple of other movies that I've seen her in where she, again, it wasn't a prominent role, but it was a significant one. I can't. Your auntie gonna get you. <laughs> I she can't get think you. of what it is right now, but yeah, the Viola has been doing her thing Aww. for a long time, and I'm so glad that she's gotten right. her recognition. It is mm -hmm. due. It is overdue. And I love seeing chocolate, chocolate, rich, rich women yes. on screen. It just it that's why. I mean, I think that's a part of the reason why too. I like you know Joessa or Issa, mm -hmm. because Issa Rae because she's a natural girl mm -hmm. and she makes bold statements in a very eloquent way. Yes. Um. So. I um like her, and then I have to give a shout out to I think one of. In my mind, a very influential person in the um, South Florida area, um, and that's Denise Lane. Um, she's a federal judge. Oh yes. Um, and after when I met her a couple years ago, um, I have seen the organization that she was a part of starting Sis grow into something. That is very impactful in that they're always doing things in the community. And because it's becoming such a huge network of women, mm -hmm. um, and not just black women, but all women, um, a lot of our guests are also a part, have all, are also a part of CIS. Mm -hmm. Meg. Like, it's really like a network of women that are doing amazing things Absolutely. with their talents. Um, so, I just want to give a shout out to Denise Lane. Um, she And you can find her on Facebook. You can find her organization on Facebook. Sis, S-I-S, Sisters um, in the Spirit. And there are a lot of beautiful, powerful... Um, women with great hearts that are coming from that that little community. Um, so, and then I, I don't know. know, you know, and I want to also point out Angela Rye. Yes, she may not common old the, lady. Yes, common. Yeah, there's a common connection. Uh, she's amazing. She's not on the list uh, on time, but she maybe she'll be on there next year. But her, like, I love her rawness, her intellect, it it makes me, um, I want to meet some of these people because you realize that depending on your influences and how you view things and how you're able to communicate things, like when I see, when I see her on CNN and she's giving it to the other, you know, other guests like raw and uncut. Not and like, authenticated. She is, I mean. I mean, from her reactions, like total black girl her, magic. Her, yes. If you you know, her, you better be ready because she knows her stuff. Exactly. Yes. And for, and, and that to me is like, that's what a person I want to just sit in a room with and like, mm -hmm. look, you know, I know that you have traditional, regular education, but I know that your your parents were a big influence and 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 made sure that you were really fully aware of your blackness and who you are and like what books do you read and how like right. and you, you know when you see people like that and then you know that it's they're not just you know she's been she was the executive director for the Congressional Black Caucus. I mean, she's an attorney. She well, I don't think that she ever. I don't know. I don't believe she's practiced. Um, but anyway, it it just I I I soak people up that are like mm. that. I love when I'm 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 away from South Florida and I am around a different mentality of like urban folks that are not just street smart. They're just like, you know, almost not militant, but just so knowledge, just such a old, just an, a very balanced education, educated, yeah. you know, they're very educated on, on, on all things black. They're very educated on, you know, 
current events. It's you know it's it's very it's very balanced. Um, you know, whereas you know, I guess we just have a diff- we have a different mindset mm-hmm. and swagger, and we're international down here. So I mean, we're I think we we do think very multi layered as well, but different. I, so I like so that, that I don't get in trouble. I'm gonna say all of our mayors in the South Florida area are influential people. Because <laughs> I don't want to get I don't I don't want to get in any trouble. I mean, I am gonna give a shout out to um, my mayor in the city that I live in, Miramar, which is Wayne Messer. Um, Because I've seen um, the growth of the city of Miramar um, being somewhat raised. In the Pembroke Pines, Miramar area, I'm an alumni of Miramar High School. So I think I've been in this city long enough to see the changes mm-hmm. and the growth. Um, and um, so I got to give him a shout out, shout out. Plus, he's a Seminole. Um, I believe <laughs> he was in grad school when I was in undergrad. So, yeah. And he's a, you know, fraternity. He's... Our brother yes, fraternity, absolutely. of Alpha Alpha um, fraternity incorporated. So I'm going to give him a shout out. But absolutely. I will say, all the mayors in South Florida um, are hitting the ground and making moves and doing things in our community um, for the better. Yeah, for the good. Despite you know what's going on nationally, mm-hmm. I think. You know, I see them active. I see them involved. I see them bringing new and innovative ideas to the South Florida area. So I just want to say, you know, thank you to all of them. And, you know, keep up up the good work, man. Yeah, there's like, what, like 33 municipalities in South Florida. So there's too many to name. We don't want to leave anyone out. Shout out to my mayor. Uh, Mayor Oliver Gilbert of Miami Gardens. Um, also, you know, another Hardiman. shout out. Uh, oh, well, he's, he's not really a mayor, mayor but, but he's one that I see in yeah, the political yeah. realm that's always out and about in the black community. Oh, my goodness. I would be remiss if I didn't say shout out to Uncle Luke. Oh, Luke for real. And Campbell. Talk I mean, about, yeah. I mean, like, just talk about the evolution between this man has been in the music industry for so long. And he's finally, he's a pioneer. Gotten, you know, yeah. a, a complete pioneer in the music industry. He finally got his recognition this year. Mm-hmm. Was it the big BET Hip Hop Awards? Yes. Um, you know, kudos, kudos, kudos. It was a big to do, and I think they you performed. Know, he performed he, last he, night. Yeah, he performed last night at the um, Funk Fest, and now he's ringing in the new year. I think in Car- um, I think in one of the Carolinas with Peter Thomas tomorrow night. Um, Loving Hip Hop Miami. Loving Hip Hop Miami starts, and so. You will, st- you know, we will all see Miami, Miami back on, the map. on the map, making headway, mm-hmm. you know, being that everyone is going to want to come back down and, and see us. You're going to have to see us. You're going to yeah. have to, you know, it is, it, it is. The good, we're going to take the good with the bad. We don't know how it's going to be, yes. but I will be tuned in to my Ratchet <laughs> TV tomorrow. Um, you know, I can't <laughs> say the same, but <laughs> Melanie will certainly I will be. Uh, let let us know how that is going. How much time do we have left? 11 minutes. Oh, cool. Great, great, great. So, um, yeah. So, you know, shout out to Luke. Uh, you know, his look, he recently his his football, his optimist team. Um, I think this year they also got like an additional grant funds for um the optimist team, Liberty City Optimist. And Snoop's team came out um a couple of weeks ago and, and played. They kind of do this every year. Luke goes to California, they or Snoop comes here, and so this year Snoop's teams were here in South Florida and played. I missed it. I was in Tampa, so you know we we there's two people that I'm thinking of that we did not mention. Um, Copenick. Who isn't his name? Cop Cop the football oh, player. Oh, Colin. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, he is on the list, and I don't know he how. He's very I, influential. I, don't know I mean, we how went through I the whole that over. I'm um, sorry. kneeling, not kneeling. You know, the, and I, let me just quote what they said. Um, Colin Kaepernick was oh, I say alone. It wrong. Kaepernick. Yeah, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. We apologize, but everyone knows who we're talking about. Yes. He was. He was alone in his early protests last year when he boldly and courageously confronted perceived inequalities in our social justice system by refusing to stand for the national anthem. At times in our nation's history, we have all been too quick to judge and oppose our fellow Americans for exercising their First Amendment right to address things they believe are unjust. Rather than besmirch their character, we must celebrate their act. For we cannot pioneer and invent if we are fearful of deviating from the norm, damaging our public perception, most important, harming our own personal interests. I thank Colin for all that he has contributed to the game of football as an outstanding player and a trusted teammate. I also applaud Colin for the courage he's demonstrated in exercising his guaranteed right of free speech. His willingness uh, to take a position at a personal cost is now part of our American history. And uh, to our um, University of Miami football oh, team oh, for the turnover, the turnover chain. Even though they it lost last turnover. night. I know, I know. I, I'm sorry, I had to say it. I had to. Um, but the turnover chain. Yes, I am a Seminole, so I had to say it. The turnover chain is, yeah. has definitely been influential right. in 2017. Um, I think it was very original. And I think it is, you know, kind of a good representation of Miami. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know... I am going to <laughs> I'm gonna pop Zachary in a second if he don't chill out. And, and then one part one more person I was thinking of is um well now his name is Brother Love, I think. I don't think his name is Diddy anymore. Who? I don't think his name is Diddy a Puffy oh, or Oh jeez. I think he his name is again? Brother Love or something what do now. You do? What, what he name? asked his fans for another name, and apparently his brother name love? is brother. His name is brother love now. Child. I, think. <laughs> I can't. I can't <laughs> yes. It. So brother love, I think, is a very influential person as well. Um, I, I think he he's actually on the top. Um, yeah. Earners. Did he explains brother love name change? Okay. It was. Oh, I guess it was like they say he was wearing off of his in, in being intoxicated. <laughs> but this name change happened in two thousand in November. Mm, anyway, okay. Diddy has a revolt movement. He has a revolt um, TV station or network that um, has become, in my mind, kind of like the new MTV. I don't think people really watch MTV anymore. Huh. I could be wrong, but. I don't um, know. And then he has like this big revolt conference in the South Florida area as well. So shout out to um, Puffy, Diddy, Sean Combs, Brother Love. Um, he's, I think, a very influential person. And, and it seems like he's really making an attempt to give back as much as he can, he can and use his financial blessings to you know support our black community which i think is cool um so yeah other um influential people in the south florida area i would say um like i said in our previous show we had my favorite favorite poet from the south florida area um butterfly I think she's very influential in our community. She has found her niche and she's been in the game for quite some time. And as Makita mentioned, she's all about, you know, supporting one another in our community. She's offered names for us to reach out to, to bring on the show. And, um, She's always doing a little bit of every, she's a little bit of everywhere 
just spreading the word, spreading her po- her poems, and she's make making a living out of it, which is awesome. Um, so I don't want to forget anyone. However, um, I think I I can't really think of anybody else. Yeah, I I am out of of uh, who else. Um, oh, we met Meg. Oh, we well, I want to talk about I want to talk about Meg and um what's the other lady's name with the rocks? The kind rock. Meg. Oh no. Meg um, and Meg, Megan. 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 Meg right. is another person in our community who has her own movement, Shine, as well as Megan who has the kindness rock collection um where she puts inspirational messages on rocks and um places them around the world or on shore for people to find which i think is cool so yeah and we have about four minutes left which is awesome we still have time to bring in the new year Um, Our special guest, Mr. Zachary, I call him Happy Buddy, he is making this little, this little um, podcast today a little challenging, but we we are getting through it, and I just want to say thank you. Um, This was a new endeavor for us in 2017, and I think, you know, I I just want to say thank you for all of our guests that we've had we appreciate your support as well as our listeners and please continue to spread the word about the show um we look forward to having more guests on the show we have um someone coming on next week um that will be we'll be talking about education a little bit um so yeah 2017 i don't have any you know, I feel like I, I, we've done a lot. We have. <laughs> we we planted have. a lot we of kinda, seeds. We, you know, I, I'm looking for a 2018 for those seeds to continue to grow and blossom, uh, heading in uncharted territory and waters. You know, mm-hmm. officially growing my consulting business politically. So we're gonna see where that leads and 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 takes me. And you know, I, we're just so appreciative of you know the people that are responding to you know our podcasts and want to participate and come on and and add lend their voice to us again we're we're this isn't what we uh do professionally but we want it to you know kind of also lend our voices mm-hmm. and and hopefully we're sharing some things that matters to you all uh, you know, and again, we're just so appreciative and we just want to continue down this path. And I hope you continue on this journey with us. Same here. I mean, thank you to those that, um, as a result of a part of result of this podcast that have reached out to me to decorate. Um, you've come to the girl cave and you're able to see my work and, you know, Things happening for Shen Sheik Decor. Um, Team Shen Enterprises has some things in the works. Professionally and Team Shen as a unit. Um, we have some things we're working on together as well. Um, I, I'm going to be making history next year, 2018. I can't wait to share that information with you guys. So, um, yeah, 2018 I think is going to be... It's a very be big year. A big year. A busy year, but a big year. Well, we appreciate you guys. You know, let, let's you let's close it out with our Oh yeah, don't forget to make sure you keep following us on Girl What at Girl What G U R L W H A T. And on that note, our um verse, Colossians 116, the gist of it is all things work. With through him and for him. And on that note, 
And you I just paraphrase it. Yeah. Sorry. No, but, it, it's fine. <laughs> We're closing out 2017 strong. Yeah. Thank you so much. You are now tuned in to Girl. Girl, what? what?